Hello, this is Marco from Dodo Racing. Welcome back to a new episode of our series, the 2JZ Shrine. Today we're going to talk about coil wiring. We're going to make this nice little wiring harness for our new 2JZ ignition coil. If you don't know them yet, you can check them out on our website. It's a compact, powerful, smart and affordable coil. And I think we have created the best coil option for the 2JZ. I know many of you are quite a bit afraid of making a wiring harness on their own. But don't worry, after this video, you will be able to make a wiring harness just like this one on your own. So what we're gonna need? We're gonna need some wire cutters, something like this. We're gonna need some wire strippers. Maybe you want to use something like this or maybe even something like this. Honestly, if you feel confident enough that you can do it with wire cutters, I won't judge you. I do this for many, many years. I'm guilty of it, but I have the feeling for it and I know I won't cut half of the wire. The next thing we're gonna need is our crimping tool. I use something like this. If you don't have one, please buy one. You cannot make a proper crimp connection with your ordinary pliers. You need a tool which is specially designed for crimping, which will give you enough leverage to make a proper crimp connection. And the crimp connection is the only connection we want to use on our car. No soldering, no wire terminals whatsoever. The crimp connection is the only connection which can resist heat and vibration. And what you're gonna find out, once you have this, you're gonna use it much more frequently than you think. Then we're gonna need some crimp connectors. The next thing we're gonna need, we need some heat shrink. Please pay attention to buy at least a 3 to 1 shrink ratio, even better a 4 to 1 shrink ratio. Your life will be so much easier and pay attention to get adhesive lined heat shrink. This will make your connections waterproof. Then we're gonna need something to shrink our heat shrink. The best thing you can use is a heat gun, especially if you're not experienced. With a heat gun you will shrink your heat shrink evenly and you won't burn your wires. Honestly. I more like to use a lighter like this. It's wireless, it's small, but you have to be a little bit careful. You have to work with the heat, not with the flame. And you can do it, but again, if you don't feel confident, if you don't have the experience, it's better to use a heat gun. Then of course, we're going to need some wires. Here I got some 0.75 square millimeter trigger wires in six different colors and some power wires in different gauges. Technically, it could go smaller, but I like staying above 0.75 for strength reasons. For picking the right wire size, we built a calculator. You can find the link down in the description. Here you can put in all of your data and the calculator will tell you exactly which wire size you're gonna need. The nice thing about this calculator is it will not only tell you which wire size you need for all of your coils, but also for one single coil or for multiple coils if you want to splice them together. We will simply start with taping the trigger wires to our coils. So just take the end of the wires and tape them to the connectors of our coils. We can go on and put in all the other wires. Now when all wires are in, we're gonna just route the wires how we want them to go. When we're happy with it, we are taping them together. And now we can just take the harness off and take it back to our shop. Now we have the harness on our table and the first thing I want to do is just secure the excess wires in place. I don't want to cut them right now because I want to route them to the ECU later on and I don't really know how much length I'm going to need. So I'll just put them together on a pile and tape them together so they don't get in our way. Now we have our wiring harness in front of us with all the trigger wires going to each coil and all we have to do now is add the power and ground wires. Therefore we will use different gauges. Every time we are supplying one coil we are going to use our 0.75 square millimeter wire. For two coils we're gonna use our one square millimeter. For four coils our 1.5 square millimeter and for all the six coils our 2.5 square millimeter wire. We will start by adding the power wire and the ground wire to our coil 6. Therefore I will use a zip tie. Just hold them together so they don't move around on you when you are working on the harness. 
everything should stay in place. Then I'm cutting our new wires roughly where I want them to join with the wires we're gonna add now to our coil 5. Just repeat the same for coil 5 with a zip tie on. After we have added the power wires to our coils 5 and 6, we want to tape them to our harness, but we will tape them just a little bit down the line. So we have a little bit of extra wire length going to our coils. Just remove the old tape as we don't need it any longer. Now we're ready to perform our first crimp connection. We want to splice our power wires together. So cut the wires to length where we want our connection to be. And then we need to strip the wires. Then I will take the next bigger wire according to our calculator result as this wire is going to supply two coils. We are ready to perform our first crimp connection now. Therefore I will take the splice and put it in my crimp tool. As you can see the splices I'm using here, they have bigger ears on the outside and smaller ears on the inside. Smaller ears are meant to grab the conductor and the bigger ears are meant to grab the insulation. But what I like to do when I splice together multiple wires, I like stripping them a little bit more so both of the ears can grab the conductor. That's why I'm performing another crimp from the other side so the bigger ears can grab the conductor tightly. And here you can see how nice it looks now. On the other side we will have our bigger wire and here you can exactly see what I mean. As we have a single wire here I will just use the splice like intended. And as you can see the bigger ears are grabbing the insulation. I will just give it another pass with a smaller size. And there we are. We have successfully made our first splice and now we only have to put our heat shrink on. Let's just find the right size. We want to have it as small as possible and as big as necessary. Just slip it on and now take the heat source of your choice. In my case it's gonna be my lighter. I just want to heat it up evenly from all sides so that it shrinks from all sides and the adhesive also gets activated all around the wire. Now as that's finished we are ready to perform the same task again for our ground wires. We are just paying attention that our next connection is a little bit further down the line so that the splices can't rub against each other. Our wiring for coil 5 and coil 6 is finished now. They both have ground and power and we are going to move on to coils 3 and 4. Therefore I'm preparing again some power and ground wires. I am just repeating the same like on coil 5 and 6. I'm gonna take my new wires and secure them with some zip ties to our coils and four and then we can add all of our new ground and power wires to our main harness. We are going to tape them to the harness just like last time a little bit further down the line. So we have a little bit of extra wire going to coils three and four. Then again just remove the old tape as it's not needed any longer. 
And there we are again, ready for our next crimp connection. The only difference this time is that we have to splice together three wires coming from our four coils. We are stepping our wire size up even further to 1.5 square millimeters. You can use our calculator for this. This time we need to supply four coils. Now repeat the same for the ground wires. We want to splice together all of our three ground wires coming from our coils. Remember, we want to cut the ground wires a little bit further down the line so our splices are on different heights. Now that we have arrived to our coils 1 and 2, we again want to add some power and ground wires to our coils. We will hold them together with some zip ties again. After this we can again tape our new power and ground wires to our main loom and remove the old tape. And finally we are ready to make our last splice. This time we are going to step up to a 2.5 square millimeters which is going to supply all of our six coils. I don't want to splice together the ground wires because I just want to run them directly into the ring lug. I just want to cut them to length and secure them together. We have finished the wiring and now we are going to protect our harness. I will remove the zip tie and cut a piece of the braided hose. We want about 35 millimeters of the wires exposed so I will just set my calipers to 35 and put them on the table. Now we can see how much of our hose we are going to need. I will subtract a little bit from both sides so we have a little bit of extra space for our heat shrink. We can put on our hose now and after that I will just again measure with my calipers whether we have enough wires exposed and whether we have enough space on both sides of the hose for our heat shrink. This looks good. So we will continue with cutting some small pieces of heat shrink to size and put it on. Just be careful not to burn anything. We can repeat this step for all the other coils now, but some of the wires are a little bit short, so it wouldn't make any sense to add some hose, so we will just add the heat shrink and have it nice and clean. All of our coil wires are protected now and now we will start with protecting the main harness. I am taking a larger hose now and I will take the measurement and again we need some space for our heat shrink on both sides. Now you can see why we have moved all of our tapes a little bit further down the line. This way we have a little bit of extra space where our new bigger heat shrink can extend over the smaller ones and grab them tightly. We are putting our heat shrinks on now and 
that's when our 4 to 1 shrink ratio comes in really handy. Now you can see it a little bit better. Remember when we have moved all of our tapes a little bit further down the line. This way we have enough space to go back with our bigger heat shrink and hold all of our smaller heat rings together. Now we can just go on with the rest of our loom. Just do it the same way. If you find it a little bit difficult to put the hose on, it's easier to push it than to pull it, because when you push it, it expands. We have arrived at our last section, but before I do it, I want to prepare our little ground strap. I want to put on a heat shrink, therefore I need to remove the tape, because I want the heat shrink or the ground strap to go under our bigger heat shrink, which will come next. I am continuing by adding my ring lug to the ground wire, but before I crimp it on, I want to put on some heat shrink. This way, after I have crimped on my lug, I can pull the heat shrink back and have it nice and clean. The last thing we need to do is putting our connectors on. These are the connectors you are getting together with our coil and plug kit. Inside you will find six bags with six connectors, all the pins and all the silicone seals. And you will have one little extra pin, so you have a little bit of room for error, but not too much. Let me show you how to wire this connector. First we're gonna have a look at how much of the wire we need to strip. As you can see, the pin has these little ears on the back. These are supposed to grab your silicone seal and hold it in place. So we will strip the wire just a little bit so that our small ears can grab the conductor and the big ears can grab our silicone seal. We can put the silicone seals on now. And honestly, if I would have been a little bit smarter, I would have done it before, but it's just one of these little mistakes you do over and over again. Anyway, let's just check if everything's correct. Do we have stripped the wire enough? Is our silicone seal in the right place? And yes, everything's fine. So I have loaded the pin in my crimp tool and now I will insert the wire paying attention that the silicone seal doesn't slip back so I'm holding it with my fingers. Then I'm realizing that I just have to give it another pass with a smaller size. This is what it's supposed to look like when it's finished and we will continue by doing the other two pins. Now we are ready to insert our pins into our connector. Therefore we need to pull out this little purple lever, but not too much. As you can see it has these little ridges over here, so you are going to put it just in the right position. But first we need to have a look at our wiring diagram, which you can find at our website. As you can see the first pin is our power supply. Let's take our connector with the little gray button facing up. And now we can insert our power supply into the first slot. But we need to be careful. See these little square holes? This is where our pins are supposed to hook in. So we need to put it on with this side facing down. Just push it in now, but be patient, if it doesn't want to go in, something is wrong, don't do it with brute force. Maybe the pin is bent, or maybe like in this case, this little purple lever wasn't in the right position. And now it 
goes in easily and we hear it clicking. We have inserted all of our pins now and everything that's left is push the little purple lever back. Again, if it doesn't want to go back, don't do it with force, something is wrong. Just give your wires a little wiggle until it goes in. The great thing about this type of connector is that it's really compact, it's waterproof and when you plug in your connector you get a nice click and then you can additionally secure it by pressing the grey button and it's going nowhere. All that's left to do now is wiring the other five connectors. You can also add some heat shrink but I like my wires just a little bit exposed. This way I can easily recognize the color code afterwards and it's just a little easier when you want to wire your ECU. Also what I like to mention is if you are running Wasted Spark I would still recommend pulling all six of your trigger wires to your ECU. Maybe you want to upgrade later on to sequential and it will be just a lot easier if you have all the trigger wires available at your ECU. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and I really hope that I could take away some fear from you because I think there's really nothing more satisfying than holding such a nice piece in your hand that you've built on your own. I'm looking forward to making content like this more frequently so if you liked it please let me know and leave a comment below which topic you want to have covered in the next video. Goodbye, see you the next time.